Hello, and welcome to Mornings with Joel, commercial real estate podcast, where we focus on rising stars and established players in commercial real estate and talk to them about how they are building legacies in today's marketplace. like to welcome you to the Morning with Joel CRA podcast. We're excited to have you here today, and we're even more excited to introduce you to our guest today, uh, Kanisha Robinette. And Kanisha, how are you? How are you doing? Doing well. Doing good this morning. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at that little uh, red pen that you have on there. So obviously we'll talk about that in a little bit, see what that's all about. So we're excited that you are here. And um, Kanisha, if you don't mind, just uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll go a little bit into your background and everything else and why we asked you to, to be with us today. All right. I'm Kanisha Rubne. I am with Greenwood CRE, full-time brokerage. I do tenant representation. Um, I have a few listings also, but that's not my specialty. Currently working on a lot of land deals for a national user. Um, I've been in the real estate industry over 16 years. Had a stint in corporate America for a while with Walmart. Uh, representing, well, I did a lot of lease negotiations for them. I had a 44 million square foot portfolio worth about $8 billion toward the end of my uh, time there. I've done a new store development from, whether that's from a 40,000 square foot store all the way up to a 250,000 square foot super center, negotiated easements, right of ways, takings, oil and gas leases, billboard leases, you name it, anything that had, that was in the portfolio, we did it. Sold excess land. Uh, did site selection acquisitions, everything. So now I'm back representing clients and I have international clients, national uh, first time investors. I love to represent my community and um, that's enough about me. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. That's uh, that's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. So you, you've done a lot in, in your, your years. Uh, you're a young lady, obviously. So that's uh, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. But no, that, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, one, one thing I always forget to tell people, I'm like, I am a CCIM instructor also. So I do teach. <laughs> so, right. Yes. Yeah, so I, I do teach as well. So I teach 101, which is uh, user financial analysis. And I teach 103, which is user decisions. Okay. Okay. So that's fantastic. That's a pretty extensive background. And uh, so we want to talk a little bit about the, the CCIM and the, the structure behind that. So what, what exactly was your so I say exposure and desire to get into real estate you've gone down so many roads and have accomplished so much so uh, what what was the burning desire to get you in this in the first place so I was uh, living in Arizona at the time which is where I am currently right now mm-hmm. but I was um, doing clinical research my undergrad is biochemistry it was chemistry with a focus in biochemistry and Spanish and I uh, was doing clinical research so if anyone knows what clinical research is that is scientists take pharmaceutical drugs and you test them on humans. So this is like, mm-hmm. you know, probably between three to seven years into that drug before it goes to the market, you test them on human beings. Ugh. And so that was like, <laughs> that didn't even sit right with my conscience. I'm like, I'm not the type of person that even takes an aspirin. So if I have a, a headache, I try to get to the root of the issue, not cover it up. Yeah. So when I was doing that, I was like, this is not this is not for me. I don't feel like I'm actually helping people. I feel like I'm hindering them. And so I was, you know, praying and asking for what else is it I'm supposed to do? And I remember my godmother from Atlanta, she said, you know, you're in Arizona, reach out to this, this couple. She said, they're out there. You know, I know you don't know anyone yet. They're out there. And we used to go to the same church in Atlanta. So I reached out to them and they were in real estate. And you know, the husband and wife dynamic duo, the wife, she did um, mortgages. She had a she had a loan company and she did something else. She did two things. The husband was in real estate. And then this was back in like 2004 okay. time frame, 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. And they were just the market was hot. They were peanut the money. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, the market was hot. And they were just grabbing everything they put together a real estate like investment group. And so I'm watching all of this. And then so he, the husband starts to teach and they didn't have any children. So they literally poured into me like I was their child. Wow. Filled up, you know, back then I had an iPod and um, they filled it up with every single book regarding real estate that you could ever imagine. And I'm talking like 
uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Napoleon Hill, even Donald Trump, just all of the, mm-hmm. the old gurus. And they put that on there and they said, listen to this, no music, nothing else. Just listen to real estate all day, every day until we can throw you in a deal. You can do it. Okay. And I had no real estate license. Wow. I had all, all of this was just hands on learning. And I did that. I took that challenge and jumped in and started to love it. So I actually started a property management company to manage all of their investment groups, real estate. They had apartment complexes, multi-million dollar properties. And like I said, all of this without a real estate license. So I didn't know what I didn't know. You know, I didn't know that I needed one, number one, for what I was doing. But I got in there and loved it because I was actually learning. I was actually helping people. And it was I fell in love. There was no turning back after that. So wow. the sky was the limit. So then when the market started to shift and they started to sell more of their portfolio off, that was my opportunity to go into commercial real estate. Okay. All right. Because that was my yeah. next question. You know, what, what directed you toward commercial? So uh, you actually made that leap at that particular period of time. I, crazy. That sure did. Yeah. So as they started to sell off some of their portfolio and the market started to shift, it had not hit commercial yet. And there was a company, it was called Equus at the time. They have since shifted. It was UGO Equus, DTZ, and now they've merged with Cushman and Wakefield. But the Arizona office had, they had to, they had a huge project that they had just obtained, but it was a small office and they had to find over 40 sites for the census. So I was able to come in at that time and help them with that project, got my real estate license and the rest is history. So learned and it was, that was all hands on. It was, it was, I think I was with that company for five years, never met my broker. So everything I shadowed are one of the guys that had been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. They literally set me in a room with a phone and said, pick a building, you know, 24th Street Camelback or, you know, the financial Mm -hmm. in Phoenix Mm -hmm. and know, you know, stack that, draw it, know who's, when the leases are coming due, smooth, take people out and, you know, and they wanted me to cold call. And at that time, in the beginning of my career, cold calling didn't work. So I had to switch gears and find another way to get my clients. And, and it's been a um, learning experience ever since. So. Wow. Well, that's incredible. You didn't have the technology that we have today either. No, no. Find that information. Yeah. We didn't have LinkedIn. We didn't have, no, we didn't have any of that. It was pick up the phone. It was go walk, walk right down in the directory. Yep. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> wow, wow. You go to the directory, you write everything down, then you kind of search and yeah. yeah. Exactly. Now let me ask you about something also that um kind of uh piqued my interest here because you you have a real zeal and a, a real desire to get in and learn and accomplish. And uh, but I know you've also had some huge jobs as well when you work for some major corporations and whatnot, what would you say to someone about entrepreneurship versus working for a major corporation in real estate? What, what's yeah, your thoughts on that? That was one of the questions that Reef asked me, and I and I had a, a whole long conversation with them about that. There's a, a, a extreme difference, let me yeah. say that. And it's not it's not for everyone. So with, on the corporate side, it's beautiful to get a check every two weeks. You get stock options. You might have a 401k and they match it. You get vacation time, you get all that. On the entrepreneur side, of course, you are the everything. You know, you you eat what you kill. You know, you, you the long nights, early mornings. Same thing on the on the uh, corporate side. Also, I had I barely slept the entire time I was uh, working in corporate America, at Walmart, and I got the same amount of pay. Mm. You see what I'm saying? At least on the entrepreneurial side, if I if I'm staying up late, it's to close a deal, it's for a client, it's for a reason, and then the reward, there's a reward there at the end. But on the corporate side, you know, it's you're gonna get the same check whether you slide by or whether, yeah, or if you stay up late or whatever. And then also on the entrepreneurial side, I would say that uh, the sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. You you can there is no ceiling. It's literally up to you. On the corporate side, there's so much red tape. There's politics. There's, does this person like you? Have you, you know, do they know your name when you're in the room? Mm-hmm. You know, have you contributed enough to, to, to this deal? And so it's, it's it's a lot of that. So it just depends on your personality. Are you built for committee meetings? And when you get a deal, putting that together in front of, you know, 20 people that may critique it and shoot it down after you did all this work, 
or do you want to be the final decision decision maker or that person working directly with that decision maker on the entrepreneurial side? Also, sometimes it, there's also a difference between larger shops mm-hmm. and smaller shops. And, I, and I've shared that in Reap also is where that on the larger, like when I was with UGL Equus and, you know, we would get maybe like a deal come down from corporate that we had to work on. And by the time you do all the work, you know, it was a small check. And then everyone else at the top got the majority. Yeah. You know, so it, that's a difference there also. Like, so you have to just pay attention to that. So now I'm in a, in a spot where the numbers are already negotiated. It's, it's a done deal. You know what you're going to get going into the deal. It's not going to dwindle down and you just get like small little chunk change for yeah. all the work that you did and then corporate gets the majority. So it's it's a big difference. One of the other things, one of the straws that broke the camel's back in corporate America was, you know, you think about opening a new store or you, or you uh, did the negotiating on the land deal or, and then you see, you, you know, all the work eternally that you did to get this deal across the table, but then you see the commission check <laughs> <laughs> from the broker in the field, what they get. And it's just like, wow, I handed them this deal. So different mindset is, I would say entrepreneurship is not for the faint at heart. You do have to have some grit, some hustle, some grind. You do have to love what you do to stay for the long haul. Big time. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I lay it all out on the table for people and, you know, tell them to be real with themselves. Yeah, <laughs> what can yeah. they do? Now, that's a very good point that you make because it's not that one is better than the other, right? It's just different, you know, because one side of it is, well, you maybe wouldn't have had that mega client if you were working on your own, because they may not have right. helped you, right? But then right. Saying, you may have got that client, or you may have five other smaller clients that add up to a whole lot more money than that one client. So it's, uh, right. it's definitely different ways of looking at it. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's when you talk about the smaller clients, I always tell people, don't judge, you know, don't and don't misjudge people. You know, someone may start small. I think even Google started in a garage. And you think about maybe the broker that turned them down, you know. But when you think about smaller, I, like for example, I have um, a client that started out with like 2,000 square feet of office space, but then they grew. Then like maybe two years later, they grew in, and they needed 10,000 square feet. Mm-hmm. And then the, and maybe like two years later, they a paid cash for a 50,000 square foot property. So you just six acres. So you never know. But if I would have misjudged them on the 2000 square foot and said, Oh no, that's too small. I don't work on that. Or I would have missed out on growing with them down the line. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's very true. That's very true. I know one thing for me <clears throat> is um, even working with a lot of the, the rape students and others, uh, even in AREP, you know, they're, they're trying to get going, trying to get things done. And you could easily do that. You know, you could easily right. say, well, I got this billion dollar project over here. So I really don't have time for that. But, you know, especially when it comes to other minorities trying to get going in the space, you're willing to invest. I know at least for me, you're willing to invest that time to say, look, I'll give you that that advice and that helping hand to do whatever I can to help, you know, you launch that, that you know, right. launch your pathway. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And that was another thing that I noticed about some of the bigger shops is when I was with that national the larger client, you know, uh, firm, Mm -hmm. I could not represent some of the people that I wanted to. Some of the people that were coming to me for help, they did not want me to take those clients because they weren't the national name with the bigger name. They were like, oh, give that to some of the smaller shops. But I'm like, they came to me, you know, and I want to help them, but I couldn't, Mm -hmm. you know, but now that's why I kind of, people look at my resume and it's like, I went backwards, you know, like I started (laughs) the the larger shop, their corporate, then, you know, then the boutique firms and the smaller firms, but those firms allowed me to represent who I wanted to. So now I get to represent people that look like me, first time investors, where they spend their whole, you know, life savings on trying to open up their dream. Mm -hmm. Um, I get to represent uh, the overlooked, I always say the overlooked, the underrepresented and the underserved. That's my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and actually your progression, while it might seem backwards, it's actually going more toward an entrepreneurial spin Mm -hmm. because I know you have a lot more freedom now at Greenwood as to what you want to do. Absolutely. That's a great shot. So, you know, Phenomenal, phenomenal shop. Yeah, I mean, that's a 
a great group. And <laughs> for those of you that don't know about Greenwood, uh, we launched about, I think it was April of a year ago. Mm-hmm. So it's a little over a year old, but the the brokers inside are not a year old. So mm-hmm. I would say average between 15 to 30 years in the business. And everyone kind of had that experience. They were with you know, JLL, Stubby, Starbuck, uh, Cushman, you know, they had had their experience in their time there. They put in work, then went to corporate companies, um, then all started their own firms and then had that experience as well. And then collectively all came together under one roof and uh, well, I would say under, under one umbrella. Mm. Because we have a different, a lot of different roofs because we're stronger together and we're powered by excellence. So now we have over 22 cities represented. We're in Miami, Detroit, Philly, uh, Denver, Dallas, Memphis, D.C., everywhere. And these are like Navy guys, CCIM instructors. There's two of us that are there. And that's rare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, two mm-hmm. CCIM instructors. And uh, yeah, powered by um, about five or started by about five African-American men. Mm-hmm. So great, great group. And we're doing great things. Beautiful, beautiful situation. Beautiful situation. Let's talk about this also. Um, you mentioned about land deals, and, and this kind of goes for the for the market and what's going on and what you see in the market right now. What what type of land deals are you working on? Are you involved in the, you know, because you, you wonder how that's going to go with the price of development and construction and rates going up as well. So what are you doing in the land space and, and what's your area of focus and what are you seeing with your clients right now? What's their appetite for land? I'm still seeing a uh, increase in building. So right now I'm working with a national company, I would say, and they're a logistics firm okay. and they are looking to build all across the country and they're in mean, various states. And so they have a goal of about 300 sites in the next few years wow. and they have not slowed down at all. And actually, actually none of my clients, none of and they're acquiring land. So they're acquiring land to build. Mm -hmm. Now they have considered some modular concepts just to in certain locations that can withstand that as far as the weather is concerned, but in not all. So they are looking at, I would say the modular concept in order to save some money, but it's not slowing down their acquisitions at all. Yeah. And then I will say, I'm just thinking about other clients that I have in my, in mind. I think, with inflation and with the prices going up, they have also seen an increase in their business. So they've been making more money as well. So it's just an adjustment, you know, even though they're making more money, they're still, they still have a budget and they're still considering their spend, but it's not hindering them from continuing to grow and develop. Okay. Okay. So basically industrial is still on fire. Uh, Industrial is still on fire, and so is land. (laughs) Industrial and land, because when you can't find an industrial site, the next option is let's get land and we'll build. Right. 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 And so it's it's, it's definitely on fire. Okay. All right. No, that's good to know. That's good to know. Now, one other thing I wanted to ask you about before we we kind of shift away about the market is also about um, something we were talking about offline. And you were saying that people generally ask you about what's more beneficial, a degree? in real estate or a CCIM uh, education. And obviously with you being the president of the Atlanta chapter, which we're very proud to say, I'm very happy to have you there. Thank you. What, what would you say to that? How would you answer that question? So I have my master's in real estate development. I did get that um, at Arizona State University. And I know with being in Georgia, there is a few of those similar programs at uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia State has a master's in commercial real estate and so a lot of people do ask me that question. And for me, mm-hmm. for me, I would say CCIM has definitely made the biggest impact. And so for those of you that don't know, CCIM is the Certified Commercial Investment Member. There's over 160 hours worth of education that you have to get. There's four core courses, 101 through 104, and that's financial analysis is the first one, then market analysis. And then there's negotiations in between that. And then you have user decisions. So that's, you know, how do I, as an investor, or if you're representing a client, decide whether to buy or sell or whether to lease a space or do a sale lease back and, you know, get this capital and go and and advance your, your business. 
um, opportunities. So that's all of those decisions. And the last one is investment analysis. And so you get a clear picture because one of the biggest differences between commercial real estate and residential is the math involved. You know, it's usually bottom line. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's bottom line on the residential side. It might be, do I like it here? You know, can I see my family here? But on the commercial side is bottom line. Does this math work? You know, it's, yeah. it's dollars and cents. It's, that's it. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't understand the math concepts and how to share that information with your client, then you, you won't elevate and get the larger clients. You know, sometimes and I, oftentimes some of the clients that I take, I'm often teaching them this which is fine because I'm a teacher and I'm I'm as an instructor and I want my clients to learn. So on the national side, on the larger shops, they already have their performance. They already understand the math and I'm able to speak to that and have educated conversations on some of the smaller clients that I feel like it's my opportunity to teach them and to share and elevate the community and let them know what they don't know and give them exposure to, you know, you need a CPA, you need bookkeepers. You know, this is how this is going to affect you down the line. And that sort of thing. So CCIM gave me that, right? My master's was hands-on. It was excellent. It, we were taught by industry professionals. I, it was the law of real estate, construction, design. It, it was great. I, we had hands-on projects. I had to do synthesis projects where we would take a dilapidated, you know, dark shuttered project. And they would say, okay, come up with something that would be good for this space using green space, using, you know, rooftop areas, using the, using just all of the trends even now, right. Mm -hmm. That are going on. And then we were judged by developers in the market and they would use our ideas or ask us to help on these projects. So that was nice. And that was Mm hands-on, but CCIM gave me more than that. It was the education, the technology and the networking. So I also was able to meet people in the industry to do deals with, you know, that right there is priceless. So it's almost like a lot of people say it's like a fraternity or a sorority mm-hmm. because, you know, when people see that pin, it, it, it means something. They know what you went through to get it. You know, mm-hmm. not only was it all the education, but there was a, a four hour exam after each one. And then the, at the end, there was a six hour exam. And then you had to fly all over to take the classes. And so that's a cost associated with that. And then there was, you had to submit a portfolio of completed deals. So that could be between 3 million deals up to, or 20 deals, 20 deals at no limit, 10 deals at t- for 10 million or three for 30 million. That's what was. So then they know that you had to do, you had to have completed some commercial real estate deals in order to get that pen. So it holds a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. And so I always tell people that catapults my career. I literally two weeks ago, or we can have about, I got a call from a CCIM instructor and they referred me a national client because, mm-hmm. because they know what I know. They know I know how to handle the deal. They know I know how to do the math. They know I know how to, you know, just this because of this pen. Yeah. And so that does it make sense. So yeah, I've no. gotten more, <laughs> yeah, more camaraderie, more um, deals, more relationships that were built through that organization in my master's program. Yeah. Wow. Powerful. Very good answer. Very good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Should have sold everybody on CC and with all that. <laughs> I'll tell people, hey, uh-huh. join for Georgia chapter. It's only $130. And then just the, the access. So we do development tours. We bring in guest speakers. There's always that educational piece, but just the networking. We're going to be doing some sharing deals later on in the year. This is our 50th year also for the Georgia chapter. And it's exciting that for the 50th anniversary, we have the first black female president, mm. you know, and that's, so that's, it's exciting. And just to see how the chapter has changed over the years. And it started with, you know, uh, the two, 2018 president, he had a desire to diversify and it's been, we've been closer People have, there's been more exposure, learning about one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've just, it's just accomplished so much. We have a mentorship program now and we're helping some of the, the new up and coming brokers in the industry. And it's, it's just beautiful. It's, it's a great, 
great time. <laughs> you know, that, that president from back then might actually be on the call right now. Do you mind sharing who that was? Or I don't know if you want to let that out. Mr. Slayton. Mr. Slayton. What's up, Rich? <laughs> He's on the call. He's on the call. He's on the call. So good uh, how y'all doing awesome. this morning? Glad, glad to be here. Bitch, I wasn't going to do this. I, I'm going to make sure I supported you. Oh, uh, thank you. And so, yeah, we appreciate everything you did for the chapter. But that vision started with you. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I was just the vessel, that's all. There you go. There you go. Great, great time. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate that. So let, let's do this before we start opening up. Matter of fact, if, if you guys have questions, we'll go ahead and start. Taking those now, if you want to put those in the chat or raise your virtual hand, that's fine. Uh, we'll be happy to get those from you. But uh, while we're waiting on those questions to come in, I did want to ask you, what do you say to um, young ones that are starting off or the, the next generation, if you will, that are trying to get into commercial real estate? What would you tell them as regards a, a career path or a way to get started or just general advice? What would you you know, help someone to appreciate in addition to CCIM? I was going to say now, you already know CCIM is going to be in there. I'm going to, I'm going to tell them join the CCIM Georgia chapter because that's where they could um, meet. Or, I'm, it, I'm, you know, of course, your, your podcast is going to go yeah. worldwide or yeah. national. Yeah. yeah. So I would say CCIM is an international <laughs> group. <laughs> Joins that chapter wherever you are located because that is a good way to meet people. And hopefully they have, well, CCIM also has a mentorship program from the National Institute, but on the Georgia side, we have a a mentorship program and that's huge because that was one of the things that, that was one of the reasons why I, I didn't have that. Like I said, I would shadow one of the guys in the office. When I first started in in the industry, I did not meet face to face my broker. For five years, I was with Mm. the company and never met him face to face. So you think about all of the information that I did not get, that I was going out, reading books, listening, you know, I did the research on my own and I went and got the information and the education. With CCIM, we have a mentorship program for people that are, are just starting on in the industry three years or less. And to me, that's huge because now you have a partner, you have someone, a champion, you have someone to, when you walk into the room, you don't know anyone, they're going to introduce you to the room. You know, you, um, you have someone, if you have, yeah. it's humongous. Yes, it's huge. So if you never, you don't even know what LOI stands for or, you know, what are the components and they're not all the same, depending Mm -hmm. on if it's a retail deal or a industrial or land, the components are going to vary. So now you can have someone that can help you with that, or you can just shadow them and be a fly on the wall and watch them do a pitch or watch them take a client on a tour and ask questions and take note. Well, ask questions after and take notes, you know? So I would say um, definitely get involved in CCIM or some sort of mentorship program like the Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors. They also have a a diversity program and they offer mentorship as well. And with either one is excellent. All right. Fantastic. Well, you're right. I think that answers your question. How important is mentorship? So I think we've covered that. Uh, Very good answer on that. And you're right. Thank you for being here and participating as always. Uh, Myra, you had a, a question. Um, if you want to unmute yourself and ask it, we'll be happy to take it. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Joel and uh, Kanisha, just for having this discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, just c- listening to your story and just kind of hearing your heart, um, it just, you know, expounds on your humility. And I just want to ask, you know, what are what are some keys to not only staying in this industry, but also thriving? Um, because most people, you know, at your firm have been in the industry for, you know, over 15 years. Mm-hmm. Oh, first of all, is this Myra from the mentorship program? Yes, I am a part of the okay. mentorship okay. program. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> no problem. I'm glad, I'm glad you're participating in the mentorship program and I'm glad you're on the call. Um, so you said basically talking about longevity. How do you, is that, yes. is that correct? That's right. When you know your craft, that makes all the difference. Knowing your craft, being educated on your client, being educated on the asset class, being educated uh, just in the industry period, knowing the market, that speaks volumes. When you have wisdom and knowledge to be able to share and give back, then you're going to get referrals. You're going to get repeat business. You're going to get, you're going to have, when you have happy clients, 
they're going to refer. When you have people in the industry that know that that you're good at what you do, you're going to get referrals. So that's that creates longevity because then you're never going to go hungry. <laughs> you know, you're always going to have something in the pipeline coming your way. And then also giving. You know, I share a lot, and I I I share with anybody. I take time with everybody. And then when I'm always giving, that means I'm always teaching. That means I have to have, you can only teach out of your overflow. So that, does that make sense? Like I had to be filled with something in order to give it out. So as the more I share, the more I give, the more people that I bless, that's seed time and harvest, the more I get return as well. That creates longevity in this industry. So once again, you're not going to go hungry. Seed time and harvest. Learning, giving, growing. All right. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you for participating as well. Very fine. Okay. Tamika Clark, you had a question. Based on your experience now, what would you have changed in your career path? So how would you answer that, Kanisha? Now, hold on one second. This is so funny. So Uriah, the first person, so he was my mentee in the CCI mentorship program in our inaugural class in 2020. Now he has, he's been giving back and now he is the I appointed him on our board. So okay. now he is the mentorship committee chair this year and has been doing an excellent job. So it's just it's just interesting to see the people on this call that's asking questions. So Myra is a part of that program now mm-hmm. under Uriah's leadership. Wow. And Tamika Clark was my mentee from the Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors program. What was that, two years ago, Tamika, or one year ago? No, it might have been three, almost three years ago. But yeah, I'm- but... And tea, so I, I, you know, just correct that uh, verbiage there. <laughs> you yes, have to- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have access to me, right? I anytime I you call, I, I get, I answer your call. We work through it, it, it whatever questions you have. She is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> um, she does give, and, mm-hmm. and she sometimes she gives so much. You're like, okay, water hose. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. So what was your question again? I'm sorry. I had to. So I was just asking from, from your experience and what you know now from the path that you took, would there have been anything you ha- would have changed? Like from the very mm-hmm. beginning, I know you said you started out as far as in school, you were going to school for medical career and then you went to real estate. So, but when you started out in real estate, is anything you would have changed? Then you know to what? Now, you know, just no, you know, you know what? No steps and things of that nature. So right. I'm just curious. No, nope. I think every single step that I made shaped who I am, and I'm grateful for every single step and every single opportunity, even with the science. So although I am not operating in a laboratory right now, and I'm not doing the research, you know, I'm not taking blood, putting a centrifuge. And I'm not doing all of that, but I still use those principles. I still research. And, you know, if you put a, a 60 page contract in front of me, I'm going to read every single line and understand it. I'm going to know the who, what, when, where, why, you know, so I still dig, I still research. I still, so it, I take those science principles and I still apply it to real estate. That doesn't go away. Like every single thing that you have ever done in your life, you you're going to use at some point. So it's just, a matter of pulling that those resources out to help you be successful wherever you are. So I don't think I would have changed anything. So even when it was tough and I was just starting out and I was with UGL Equus and they put me in that office with that phone, I had to find another way. Cause when I picked up the phone and I, you know, and I, and I shared this with you and with some other people on this call and I, and I'm cold calling and I'm saying, my name is Kenesha. It didn't work for Kenesha. It may work for a, a Tom or a Joel or a or Scott Steve. or a Steve <laughs> or a Sandy, right? But it might not work for a Tamika mm-hmm. or a Kenesha. So I had to find another way to, to so it, even that right there, the challenges and the obstacles that I had were beneficial. You know, they got me to use a different part of my brain, brain got me to be creative. So then I'm like, okay, how else can I get in the room? How else can I get in front of the people that I needed to? And I use education to do that. You know, so then it didn't matter, you know, or even I always tell people, I always tell people this, you know, whereas Kenesha may not get in the door, but CCIM will bust that door wide open. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it, those four letters behind my name actually precede me. And I li- I had a call, um, Joe, um, I was calling on some land in South Georgia uh, maybe a month ago. Uh, that deal is now under contract, getting ready to close. But when I I called the guy, I did not, I heard his voice. And so I heard the twang. So I did not leave my name. I just said, I just said you know, hi, I'm, you know, I'm calling about such and such property. So when he called back and he heard me, then he said, well, what's your name? What's your name? And I'm like, now, why does my name matter so much? I'm already telling you why I'm calling, what I'm calling about. This is the property. This is the email. I'm talking about my clients. Well, what's your name? And then I said, my name is Kenesha Rupne, CCIM. With da, 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 da. Do you know that he changed instantly? Wow. Then it was like, oh, oh, well, ma'am, now I'm ma'am. Well, ma'am, oh, the property is such and such and such. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes, ma'am. No, oh, wow. Yes, ma'am. Everything was ma'am from that point on. And then he said, you have your CCIM? I said, yes. Then he said, wow, I took two classes and I couldn't finish. Mm. He said it was too difficult. He said, wow, I respect that. And then everything, I'll send you whatever you need. What do you need? I said, wow. Wow. Interesting. Interesting how people categorize who they respect and when. Very interesting. Very interesting. You know, Very I feel like I need to have CCIM applications at the back of the <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. <laughs> right. right. I'll, I'll tell anybody it, it made it made a huge difference. And then when you have different champions along the way, because even like I said, I would have never even I would have never even uh, applied to to be an instructor if it wasn't a bug put in my ear from Mr. Slayton. He said, you should do it. And I said, should I? And then, and then I got the, uh, the support from my amazing husband. You can do it. And went out for it. But, yeah. so, you know, just champions along the way, along your journey to help you get to where you need to be, help you thrive in this industry. So. Yeah. You know, that's quite an experience. And you just could imagine if you would have said, yeah, and on top of that, I'm an instructor. So maybe I could help you finish your class and you thought it was so oh you you know i got that in there you know (laughs) you know i got that in there i said well what Mm -hmm. class did you end on oh okay i teach that you need my help (laughs) yeah boy that shuts it down real quick that's so funny shuts it down yeah man Man, thanks for sharing that that's beautiful beautiful experience oh man all right uriah let's see here could you provide insights on the value of taking ccm courses like the 101 come on uriah okay Go ahead. We'll, we'll let you do it. Oh, so 101 <laughs> is financial analysis. So I've kind of already shared that, but that's going to give you time value of money. That's mm-hmm. going to give you, give you, and and so everyone did not take, everyone didn't go to college. You don't need to go to college to get a, you know, to be in the real estate industry, right? Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. So not everyone took that path. So how else are you going to get the information to be successful in the commercial side of things, not residential, but on the commercial side of things, mm-hmm. you're going to need to know the inner workings of, of finance, right? And if you don't have a finance background, CCIM gives you that. Mm-hmm. So financial analysis is one-on-one. That gives you the introduction into the, the, the money world. So that's time value of money. That's compounding interest, the interest, that's depreciation, that's how to calculate a loan, how to calculate cap rate, NOI. How what what is the, what does the the uh, a worksheet look like if you were going to you know potential rental income you know it's mm-hmm. it's all of the upfront math that some of us did not get in school depending on what side of the tracks you were on you might not have had a finance class in high school or like I said so it gave you all the basics and then each class built from the next one mm-hmm. so you were going to apply the principles you learned in one. And then it was going to grow from there. Yeah. So it is definitely essential for this industry. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, kind of building on the um, statement by the gentleman that we were buying the land from. There's a lot of people out there that started CCIM and, and haven't finished or dropped off at some point. What, what is the current protocol for that? You know, is, is like a certain part of it good for so many years or how does, the, how does that part of it actually work? I know for your portfolio, you have to complete your your deals within five years. But I would also say that as far as if you took a class 10 years ago, 
I would just say start over because the, the material has changed. The tax rates aren't even the same. So the calculations are going to be different. Mm -hmm. So if it's been a three year or more gap, I would say repeat the class. Repeat, just take it over and start start from scratch. Yeah, because you're going to, there's always going to, we're always updating those instructor manuals and that information and technology has changed. So we're always incorporating new technology. So right now, all CCIMs have access to site to do business. That changes daily. You know, that's Esri, that's bringing in demographics and tapestry information for the market that changes so much. You you would want to repeat that class because if you took it five years ago, three years ago, it is not the same. Yeah, yeah. No, good point. Good point. So appreciate you bringing that out and sharing that. Let me ask this also, just as regards the, the market uh, conditions, we know that we're going into a raising, rising interest rate environment right now. There will be some slowdown in the marketplace. I know you said industrial is still. On fire, you haven't seen any slowdown. For our audience, what would you say are the opportunities in the commercial real estate space now? If, if someone was looking for opportunities to invest, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Where would the, the smart money go? So, okay, so we already said industrial. We already said land because mm-hmm. you you can never go wrong with land because then, then you're not going to make any more of it, right? That's it. Mm-hmm. Once, once it's filled, it's filled. So, but I would also say look at, the industry. Think about what happened during COVID when everyone kind of left the high rise offices and started working from home. Or just so think about what's going on in the industry. I always tell people when you want to invest, look at what's going on. You know, look at, at the area. What's what are people starting to do or stopping stopping doing? And so I would say if like office parks. An office park, to me, would be a good investment. And I say that because you drive in, you park, you go into your space. You know, for people that are still um, leery about being around other people, you know, you you go right in. Like, you can still have some foot traffic, you know, from other people in that area. You still have neighbors, but you don't have to get in the elevator with 10 people. You know, you don't have to get into, like, you think about... Um, during COVID when they had certain people that were trying to get back to the office, but they were only allow a certain number of people in the elevator, you know, or so how long would it take you to get to the 30th floor or the 20th floor, or you're staggering, you know, I'm going to come in on every other day. And then, but in the office park, you just walk in and you park. So I think people could turn that into that. That's a good investment. And then yeah. land. And then also, industrial for life <laughs> so like that that last mile there's always going to be that people are needing storage space and once again land because once again during COVID you think about people moving out of the cities and moving out of the high rises and coming towards the suburbs area and needing to they may have wanted to get land just to hold on to it to build or yeah so yeah. But I would always always tell people, look at the trends and uh, try to wrap your brain around solutions. If you start thinking solutions, you'll figure out where to invest. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, it's amazing because we, you know, I've been in Atlanta for a few years now. And to watch those trends, you know, from everybody running to the north side to running back into the city. So then COVID breaks out and running back outside. To, you know, it's this. It's just great right. over the years. But it's cyclical. It's yeah, cyclical. It really is. It really is. Yeah. yeah. So if you just hold something, you're going to win at some point. <laughs> yeah. 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 You just, you know, it depends on if you can hold out that long. So, right. You know, but you, you bring up an interesting point because I, I'll share this with you. One of my long term clients that I've had for many years, we refinancing her uh, portfolio right now. This is a, 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 you know, young black girl and a woman, excuse me. And um, she has a portfolio of office parts. And all of them are exactly what you described. You know, it's kind of class C that she's been upgrading to B. And um, she went the, the property literally in less than a year from closing on the portfolio last year to right now we're refinancing it. We're able to refinance it because she took the occupancy from 32% to 100% right now. Uh, and that's all we know with the rehab going on. Yeah. So it's just incredible. I mean, the demand is, is unreal. And like you said, exactly. you walk in and you don't have to deal with people, you know? 
So, I mean, less yeah. desirable, so you have less competition. You know, there you go. Right. Class A buildings downtown. So, right. You get a class C, do some value add, you know, make sure the roof's good, the HVAC, the, the, the plumbing, electrical. And uh, there's always going to be someone that's going to need, like, like office space. So you think about the professional services. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen so many of those class C office parks where there's been a, a tax service or bookkeeper yeah. uh, in there for 20 years. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're and they're just happy walking into their little office doing their work every single day. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You know, so and it was real big during COVID because of a lot of times, you know, there was a big push for this shared space. But mm-hmm. then you you're around other people. So if you have these private offices, you know, you can uh, be alone and not have to be at home with all the kids making noise. Right. Get some work done. So, you know, it's uh, it's very powerful. Yeah, it's good stuff. Mm-hmm. So I tell you what, we're we're about out of time. So, what what um, concluding comments do you have for our guests and for anyone else that wants to hear wisdom from Kanisha Robin? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I appreciate you having me. I thank you for the opportunity. I would say for other people that look like us, you know, I talked a lot about CCIM, but even another step, I would say, read, check out the real estate associate program. I, I know both of you and I have been. Uh, contributors to that. We were able to go in and speak to that. The students there, there are a number of students, I'm sure, I'm students. There are a number of people that were on this call, I'm sure that have graduated from REAP and can also speak to the benefits of that industry as well, because it continues. It's not just you graduate and then there's nothing. The relationships continue. The camaraderie continues. They continue to meet and get together. And that's always that's always good. Even when I was um, in corporate America at Walmart, there were three, three people that looked like me in the real estate department that were REAP graduates oh, really? and that got hired through that program. Right. So that was, of course, wow. when they were still doing the interviews and everything. But yeah. And so now one of the guys that graduated from REAP that was at Walmart at the time I was, he just recently went to Meta, Facebook. Okay. And the other lady, she just took off. She was with NBC Global Direct. Mm. Yeah, so these were, I mean, REAP is where they got that introduction into real estate. They they had no real estate knowledge before that. So I always share REAP and I always share CCIM as an after REAP uh, transition yeah. and then mentorship. Yeah, and I would say keep doing what you're doing. Don't get discouraged. Even though it looks difficult, it might look like an uphill battle. Keep up the good work. <laughs> you can do it. We need more people like us in the industry. Yeah, there's always going to be allies. There's always going to be resources. Uh, so get around good people that can that can uh, be your champion and help you succeed. Yeah. No, that's that's beautiful. Beautiful words of wisdom, and um, you know, sharing that progression is very important. You know, that this is how you do it. You know, you go to REAP and then you do this and then you do that. Then you join CCIM and, you know, you're off to the races. So it's, uh, it yeah. certainly is, has worked for you, um, you know, extreme success and you've done a great job. And uh, I know there's nothing but blue sky ahead of you. And Thank I'm happy, you. happy to uh, have you here today. And, um, you know, you make a wonderful guest. So this, this has been. Thank you. So we thank you. For and with, with the REAP, we started the the CCM mentorship program because of a, a request from REAP. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like a what now thing. And this is how your podcast came about, you know, people mm-hmm. wanting to hear right. more after graduation. The same thing with, they, they wanted an introduction into mm-hmm. the industry. It was like, okay, now we have this REAP information. Now what do we do? Right. So right. how can I apply this? How can I learn more about the different asset classes? So we had them to apply, to fill out, their interest. We prepared them with a, a CCIM veteran in the industry, and that was in that asset class for nine months. They were able to shadow, et cetera, ask questions, have mentorship showcases where the mentors would talk about uh, their specialties, and so that that was birthed from a, a REAP relationship as well. So if you are a REAP graduate and you're interested. You can apply online and uh, join the Georgia CCIM chapter and we'll pair you up with the, with the mentor. We're already in the middle of the program right now, but we can do that for next year. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, no, but well, this is beautiful. This has been fantastic. And um, all the good insight, all the good advice, all the good uh, encouragement as well. 
you know, and, and really given the, the roadmap as to what needs to be done uh, in order to be successful in this space. And I will say this, uh, you know, more than ever, if you're a minority, you know, this is the time to do it. You know, I remember walking into those rooms, uh, trying to raise capital and uh, being a young guy. And they, they were always like, OK, who else is with you? Should we start the meeting when the, when the rest of the folks show up? I mean, literally. I had that. I've yeah. had that. I've yeah. had that. I walked into a, a pitch in Arizona mm-hmm. and uh, it was I was the one that was doing the presentation and they were just talking, chatting. And I'm sitting at the computer, but they just assumed. Yep. Yeah that I was the assistant. And yeah. they said, well, we'll start the meeting when your boss gets here. Yeah, yeah. I said, wow. <laughs> so when I was ready to set up, I said, and then I introduced myself and I told them, I mean, it was like this. Yeah. Now I'll just drop. So yep. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah, I've yeah. That's, that's, it's real. It happens, you know? Yeah. And so to now have these organizations and the people in position in these organizations that could actually help advance your career, this is the time to do it, hands down. If you're going to do it, get get busy. You know, there's no better time. So, uh, Kanisha, has been beautiful. We thank you for having you on the Good Mornings with Joel CRE podcast. Uh, we look forward to this one going live as soon as we get it all edited down. And uh, we're excited to uh, have you here. And hopefully, you know, we'll have you circle back in a, you know, maybe a year or so, if not less, and uh, talk to us about what other exciting things have happened in the uh, third and fourth quarter of 2022. So, all right. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Thank you all. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Mornings with Joel CRE podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to write a brief review. And as always, continue to invite, share, and subscribe.